Our math warm up today is going to be number dictation. So what I'd like to do is read aloud a number and you are going to write the number. So the first number is 37,124. I'll say that one more time. 37,124. 24. Write the number and circle the thousands digit. Underline the ones digit. Time to check your work. How did you do? Okay, let's try another one. 630,000. 726. I'll say that one more time. 630,726. Circle the 10,000s digit. Underline the 100,000s digit. Pause your video and do that now. Let's take a look. How did you do? Okay, let's try our next one. 700,056. I'll say that one more time. 700,056. Circle the thousands digit. Underline the hundreds digit. Go ahead and pause your video and do that now. Let's check your work. How did you do? All right, last one, and we're gonna make it a doozy. Are you ready? 15 million, 803,021. I'll say that one more time. 15 million, 803,021. Now I want you to circle the millions digit, underline the thousands digit. Go ahead and pause your video. All right, let's take a look at that big number. How did you do? All right, moving on, we'll head on to mental math, or actually math message. So let's take a look at the math message today. We have some pictures here that I'd like you to take a look at. So I have a square, I have this strip right here, and we have this little square down here in the bottom. The small square represents one. What does the rectangular strip represent? So hopefully you figured out that the rectangular strip represents 10. So if we know that, what does the large square represent? So now we're talking about this square here. What does it represent? It represents 100. And how do we know that? How do we know that that represents 100? Well, if we had place value blocks sitting in front of us, we would be able to take 10 of these and it would cover this whole square. It would take 10 of them. And of course, 10 times 10 would equal 100. Again, when we look down here at the single square that we started with, it would take 10 of those to equal this rectangle right here. So what happens when I add an even smaller square right here to the mix? This tiny little square is going to represent one thousandths. And I want you to notice that there is a TH at the end of that. So this was our original square here, our original rectangle and the square that we started with. 
just to begin with. And now we have added this tiny little guy into the mix. So why am I showing you all of these pictures? Well, we are going to relate that to the good old place value system. So if we take a look down here at this chart at the bottom left, notice I have hundreds here, tens, ones, here is my decimal place, and then we have tenths, hundredths, and thousands. Okay, if we look at the pictures, this was our original square, this was my original rectangle that we started with over here in our ones, but now we are getting smaller than a whole. So that's what we have on the decimal side. These are smaller than a whole, okay? This is whole numbers over here. This is smaller than a whole. These are the places that we have on this end, tenths, hundredths, thousands. So if we were going to take a number and place it in the chart, we would have to look at where the decimal point is up here and how we would place that. So for example, if I had the one flat that we started with, that is 100. And then if we had one 10 and one one, so my number would be 101 if I were looking at these blocks down here, okay? Then if I had one tenth, that one would go here. I had one hundredth and I had one thousandth, which that's kind of hard to say. But anyway, um, that's how we would write that to show it in the correct place and the correct order. So the way that we would say that number would be 101 and 111 thousandths, okay? So again, that would be 101 and, so where we have that decimal point, when we say those out loud, we're gonna say the word and instead of 101 decimal point 111, okay? So we need to say it correctly. So it's 101 and 111 thousandths. So whatever your last digit is on this side is what determines what word you're going to say here. So since my last digit is in the thousandths place, that's what I will say when I finish that set of three numbers. So let's try another one. Let's say that I have, instead of um, 100 block, let's say that we have three, one, two, and seven, eight, okay? So if we were going to look at that number right now, how would we say it? We're gonna say 312 and 78, and look where it is, hundreds. So let's try that again, 312 and 78 hundreds. See how this digit here ended up in the hundreds place, so that's the word that we say at the end, and this one up here ended in the thousands place, so we said thousands. So if I had another number and there was only one digit here, then we would say tenths. Decimal place value. So how do base 10 blocks relate to decimals and place value charts? As we can see from our diagram, we have base 10 blocks representing each place in our place value system. So if we just had whole numbers and no decimal point, if we pretended that this side wasn't here and all of this was not here, we would say numbers like we always do. So if I had a one and a nine and a two, and we're gonna ignore the decimal point, we would say, oh, 
that's 192. Or if I had 23 here and nothing after that decimal point, I was like, oh, that's 23. But what happens when we change things? What happens when we add a three here, a four here, and maybe a five? That totally changes the value of the number. So now instead of just 192, I have 192 and 345 thousandths. So my number changes. So that number is actually larger than 192. Is it 193 yet? No. So let's take a look at the one on the bottom there. We could change that number as well. Let's say that we had these place value blocks. So instead of um, a flat, we don't have this. We have two of these. So there's two of those. We have three ones instead of one. We don't have any tenths. We have seven of those. And we would have eight of those thousands. Okay, so we can use those pictures to represent our decimals, which is how these are related, and then we can turn that into an actual number. Just like we do when we're working with whole numbers, we can take place value blocks and rearrange them and make different numbers. We can do the same thing with decimals. So how could you represent these numbers in a place value chart? So if we take a look here on the left, I have some blocks, right? We have three rectangles here. We've got four squares. And remember what these are worth. Look at the size. Now these are different. And there's uh, five of those. So if we were going to place those in a chart similar to this, and we're not going to place the blocks themselves, but we're actually going to write the digits. So in your assignment, you're going to have a page that looks very similar to this page here. And I'm going to give you some numbers that you're going to write and figure out how to put them in your chart. So if we take a look at the first one, we've got three tenths right here. So we're going to transfer this here. There's three tenths. And then we have four hundredths. Looking at the size of the block there on the left. And then we've got five of those tiny little guys in the thousands place. So we basically will plug those numbers in. Do we have a hole? No, we do not. So in that place, we're going to write a zero. So we would say that number as zero and 345 thousandths. So let's take a look at the second one. Oh, when we look at this one, we have a hole, and then we have some hundredths and some thousandths. So when we go to plug those into the chart, we have one hole. I have seven hundredths and I have eight thousandths. So what do we do here? I didn't have any tenths for this problem. Nothing over here that was tenths. So that means that I plug in a zero right there. And we would say that number as one and 78 thousandths. So in your book, you are going to locate this page in your list of pages to do for the day. And I believe it's the first one. And I would like for you to 
place several numbers. So off to the side, I'm going to give you those list of numbers. So let's say that I want you to figure out how to write the following numbers. Okay, so you're gonna take these four decimals and you are going to place them in the place value chart on journal page 112. Now remember, you need to use the decimal point and the column labels to carefully place each digit in its proper location. So part of this lesson is being able to write decimals in words. So we've got three problems here that I want you to think about. How would you write that in word form? So our first decimal, when we say it out loud, is 0 and 53 hundredths. So that's exactly what we're going to write. So when you write that out, it should look just like this. So let's take a look at the second decimal. We have three and 103 thousandths. Again, you're going to write it just like you say it. And that one was a tight squeeze to get it to fit on there, but we would write it out just like I said it before, three and 103 thousandths. And our last one, we have four and two tenths. And there you have it, writing decimals in words. So what about writing fractions as decimals and vice versa, writing decimals as fractions? We're gonna do a couple of those as well. So our first fraction is three tenths. Now we want to write that fraction as a decimal. So when we look at it, we think to ourselves, is there a whole number? No. So I'm gonna put a zero for the whole number place. I'm going to place my decimal, and the fact that it's 3 tenths means that I only have one decimal place after the decimal because that's the tenths place. And there you have it, 0 and 3 tenths. If we take a look at the next one, we have 56 one thousandths. Again, do we have a whole number? No. So we're going to write 0, our decimal point, and it says 56 thousandths. So let me think this through. If I write this, that's 56 hundredths. So that's not it. Zero and, there we go. Zero and 56 thousandths. So please do not make the mistake of what I did the first time, okay? All right, and then we take a look at the next one, we are going to take a decimal this time and turn it into a fraction. So look at the decimal, we have zero and three thousandths. So we're gonna write that as a fraction, we need it to say three thousandths. And it would look just like that, three thousandths. And our last one, we have zero and seven tenths. So think what's after the decimal point, seven tenths. So that one's pretty easy. It would look like that. And there you have it. So let's summarize. What have we talked about today? Well, we first looked at place value blocks and we learned that we could use those to represent decimals. Check. We also learned, and maybe I didn't actually say it, but a digit in a given place, for example, if it's in the ones place, or the tens or the hundreds, is worth 10 times as much as it would be worth in the place to its right. So that means if my digit is in the ones place, and I look to the right, that one is worth 10 times as much as the digit to the right. 
or if my number was in the tens place and I had a two, for example, it's 10 times as much as whatever is in my ones place. Okay. Um, third bullet point, we have a digit in a given place. So now we're looking at digits that would be to the right of the decimal point. So we're talking about the tenths place, the hundredths place, the thousandths place is worth one tenth of what it would be worth in the place to its left. So with decimals, the farther you go to the right, the smaller the number. Think about that one, okay? So a digit in a given place, tenths, hundreds, thousands, is worth one-tenth of what it would be worth in the place to its left, okay? So the opposite of the whole number part. All right, that's a wrap. See you next time.